I think it, like so much has to be said about really loving that process as well of like learning how this works and not really minding putting in 10 hours and not necessarily earning anything because because you're learning how this industry works and it's something that you're you're interested in it's something that you're excited about whereas if it's something that you're kind of just doing just for the money and it's something that you're not going to enjoy at all then it's going to be very hard for you to have any kind of longevity in it this is Debbie and welcome to another episode of The Offbeat Life where I speak to inspiring individuals who ditched the norm to become location independent. We'll learn how to create sustainable laptop lifestyles from the experts that will help us achieve freedom from our 9 to 5. This week, I'm so excited to speak with Brendan, who is a former accountant from New Zealand. In 2011, he left the corporate world for a trip around the world that still hasn't ended. He now travels and writes full-time, sharing stories from his journey on his blog, Bren on the Road. Listen on to find out how Bren quit his job to make money while traveling. Hey everyone, I am here with Brendan. Hey Brendan, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me. And Brandon is in Australia and he is so kind enough to talk to me literally in such an early time in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for staying up for me. I feel so honored. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm usually up this late anyway, to be honest with you. Well, you were supposed to say, oh, I did this just for you so to make me feel good. <laughs> okay, should we rewind it? Just go, let's start again. Oh my God. Well, I had to wake up. And uh, I'm so tired right now, but uh, anything for you, anything for a podcast episode. So here we are. Okay, that makes me feel so much better. So thank you, Brandon, for taking (laughs) this out of your sleep. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I feel so honored. So you have a really interesting life. Can you tell us a little bit more about you and why you live an offbeat life? I guess the relevant part of my story starts at university and I studied accounting not for any real reason just because it was kind of the easiest subject for me and so I finished my degree without too much too many problems and I got an accounting job at a a reasonably well-known firm in in New Zealand and I was kind of working that job for you know three three and a half almost four years and it was just one of those classic you know this job is not the right job for me you know like I'm showing up to work every day and this is just not I just know that this is not the right job for me so once I'd finished my chartered accounting degree I my contract was finished and I just felt like there was something else that I wanted to do and I I decided to take some time off to go traveling my first trip was to Tanzania actually because I just wanted to go somewhere that was was so different to anything I knew you know I just wanted to get as far away from the sort of the life that I'd been living as possible so I spent a couple months in Tanzania volunteering there at a at a um at a preschool in the north of Tanzania and that you know an experience like that obviously changes a lot of your perspectives on life and and I just decided at that time that I uh I wanted to to spend more of my time or dedicate a a larger portion of my life to to traveling the world and and learning about the world. So after Tanzania, I I went to uh, South America and I I took a backpacking trip through through a few different countries in South America for a few months. By this time, you know, it had been like, probably by the end of that trip, it had been about five or six months since I'd left my job. And I just knew that this is... uh, this is going to be something something that I'm going to be doing for a long time because it was just something that I that I enjoyed so much and it, it had been so long since I'd found something that I'd enjoyed so much you know and I think a lot of long term travelers they have they have the same story you know after you start traveling for a few months and then it gets on to 6 months and then before you know it you've been traveling for a few years because there's just it's just something about it that lights you on fire I suppose you could say it's something so different to anything else you would experience in everyday life and so after that I, I got a, uh, a scholarship to study in in China for a year I spent a year or two semesters so I spent about 10 months in China and then after that it was straight back to the road I backpacked through Southeast Asia through you know the Philippines Cambodia Thailand Singapore 
Malaysia, all those places. And then um, from there, it was just uh, all over the world from there. I mean, it was through Europe, through Africa, South America again. And somewhere in the middle there, my money ran out, obviously. Um, I'd had a lot of money <laughs> saved from from my job. Wait, so Brandon, how did you even prepare before you left? Because you did have a steady income in the beginning and you left that. You left your nine to five. Did you know that you were going to do full-time travel? And how did you do that? I didn't think that it was going to be something that would last this long you know it's been this was 2011 that I quit my job so it was it's almost nine years now and so I never expected it to be something like that but I always did know that I wasn't going to work in that job forever because it was just it was just unfulfilling you know and it was just wasn't satisfying to be working so hard and not enjoying it is is the worst feeling you know it's fine to be working hard for something if you believe in it and you really enjoy it but to be working so hard for something that wasn't really in your heart you kind of rot in that office and and so I knew that's not where I was going to stay so I was saving my paychecks for pretty much that entire entire time that I was working there and I wasn't too sure what it was going to be for but I just knew that I needed to be saving because I knew that I wasn't going to be working here forever and, and I wanted to be prepared for whatever came next and then so when I t- took that first trip, in the back of my mind, I thought that there was a very real possibility that I was going to go back to maybe not that particular job, but maybe the industry in some way or another, maybe overseas or maybe pivot to a, a, a different area of finance maybe. But obviously it didn't work out that way. But when I left for that first trip, it wasn't like, okay, I'm leaving and it's going to be a <laughs> huge long trip. Now it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to do this for a couple of months. And then a couple of months turned into, you know, five or six months. A few and then years. Into a year, <laughs> yeah, and then it turned into nearly a decade. So, <laughs> but it, it was never like that in the start. And I think most things happen like that, actually. I don't think anyone says, well, I'm going to go leave and travel the world for yeah. 10 years now. It kind of happens step It's by more step. of a discovery yeah. process for you. Absolutely, yeah. When you finally realized that this is what you wanted to do and you've been traveling for quite some time and then you start running out of money, what did you do to create income so that you can keep traveling? That was around two th- around the end of 2013. So I'd kind of been about two, just over two years on the road. and I, And I wasn't really out of money but I was I was running I could see that I was running out of money and it was like this something I better start doing something quick before you know we get into an interesting situation here so (laughs) you know honestly it started on Google it just I went on to Google and I was like how to make money I can't remember I think it was like how to make money while you're traveling or how to make money on the internet or something like that there was so many things that you could do and I was it was kind of like blown away that I hadn't discovered this yet you know like how I hadn't heard anyone talk about this yet and so there was making YouTube videos and there was freelancing and you know programming and graphic design and photography and all these things that people were doing making money on the internet I went into freelancing that was the thing that I thought like that makes the most sense to me like that seems like a uh, how would you say like a high probability play because I you know I had a degree most people would have considered me reasonably well educated you know um, I didn't know anything about making websites or anything like that so freelancing is basically just working but remotely you know working for a remote client or whatever so I went into writing writing seemed like something that was easy to get started and um, obviously I had a finance background so that gave me a good allowed me to carve my own sort of niche if you like in in the freelancing space there was at the time there was a website called Elance. Um, now it's it's been bought by a bigger company called Upwork, but um, at the time it was Elance, mm-hmm. and this was kind of like the the online freelancing eBay, if you like, like the, the the number one site. And so I went on there and I was just searching for different jobs, and I found a few writing jobs. And so my whole freelancing career it started with writing articles at I think it was like twenty five bucks a pop. I was I was writing. F- blog posts for an accounting blog I can't remember the name of it now I think it was color accounting or something like that (laughs) and 
I wrote an article for them and they were like, oh yeah, that was really good. We'll, we'll give you, uh, we'd like to, we'd like you to keep writing for us. And they gave me, they paid me 250 bucks to, to write 10 articles for them. Then I, I just kept going. Like I just started applying for every job that I could find on Elance. I wrote a few articles for like 10 bucks a pop. And, you know, I wrote, um, I wrote this accounting course for these guys, these, these guys in India that were putting together like some accounting training thing. And that was, they paid me 500 bucks to, write this whole accounting course and so I was just for that for that next few months I was just on my laptop like 20 football well, about 18 hours a day I was just writing you know, like just doing this, this freelance work you ended up using your degree and the knowledge that you had not necessarily as an accountant again but as a mm. writer who writes about finance and yeah. money which is I know it may seem like a waste of time, a lot of things for us, especially if you went to university and you're not doing that anymore and you feel yeah. like you've wasted all of that money. But in some way, if you think about it, you could use all of the skills that you've learned in school and use it into the real world that you have now, which was a really great transition for you to start making money online doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i was actually i was watching a podcast the other day and they were talking about the importance of everything that you do just do it the best that you can because you never know like how you never know how that's going to come and serve you somewhere down the line because you no one can see the future but like if you're doing something today even if you're just like a waitress yeah you should do that job to the best of you know give it everything you have because you never know down the line maybe you own your own restaurant and and, yeah. and now suddenly you know things that you yeah. that you didn't think you would need to know yeah. and also it teaches you a lot of patience customer service there's so many things that you can learn yeah, in waitressing absolutely. every single thing that's why i'm always really excited when i meet people who are absolutely passionate about what they're doing even though it's something that they don't necessarily want to do but it's just the process and the work that they enjoy and learning from that which mm, is also yeah. really exciting so when you were doing this i'm sure there was a lot of trial and error has there been mm -hmm. a huge setback that you encountered and how did you handle that a huge setback um not re nothing nothing enormous i don't think it was just i mean it depends what you would consider huge like i i probably sent out maybe 20 proposals before i even got my first writing job and i know for some people that would be like man that was been so but for me it was just like man i'm gonna make this work you know like this is this is such a a cool thing you know like you're making money on the internet and like I sent out maybe 15, 20 yeah, proposals on Elance and, and I started noticing that there was so much competition from especially countries like India where they've got guys that have like MBAs and, and like just crazy credentials and, and they're willing to work for so much less than you are, you know, because obviously it costs a lot less to live in India than it does in New Zealand or Australia. So they were willing to write articles for like $5 an hour and it meant that I had to kind of take a different approach to how I was going to land jobs because these guys are like more qualified than you and they're probably smarter than you and they're willing to work for less money than you. So how do you beat them? And so I actually wrote a big article on my blog about how I had to try and how I had to try and brand myself differently somehow. And that was how I was able to get that first job. I'm sure that so many people that have tried freelancing have given up after that fifth or <laughs> sixth uh, rejection because it is it takes so much time to write out this proposal and like maybe they ask for a sample and you put that together and you you know you put all the stuff together and then you just don't hear back and after five or six times you're just going to be like oh man what am I even doing like what's the point but you know if you persist yeah yeah. I think that's the interesting thing about freelancing and being an entrepreneur is that you're going to be facing so many little setbacks like that and for a lot of people like you said it depends on how you look at it 
because if you're not persistent, you're going to give up after a few tries. I mean, personally, when I work with brands, I've sent out hundreds of emails and I've only gotten (laughs) back like a few handfuls. So if you're going to give up after the 20th or 30th email, then this is definitely not for you. But if you're going to keep going, it Mm. pays off. And also you learn how to send out those pitches, how to again, like you said, brand yourself. And it gave you this amazing lifestyle because you didn't give up, which is incredible. Mm. I think like so much has to be said about really loving that process as well of like learning how this works and not really minding putting in 10 hours and not necessarily earning anything because, because you're learning how, how, how this industry works. And it's something that you're, you're interested in. It's something that you're excited about. Whereas if it's something that you're kind of just doing like just for the money and, and it's, it's, it's something that you're not going to enjoy at all, then it's going to be very hard for you to have any kind of longevity in it, especially the same thing as with blogging. When, when I, when it came to blogging, it was exactly the same process all over again. Like you spend hours on this blog post and no one reads it. And it's like, oh, <laughs> what's the point of writing it if no one reads it, but you have to love the process of doing it. And then eventually after your 10th or 20th blog post, like a hundred people read it and you're like, Oh damn, like it's happening. <laughs> you get so you know? excited. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that, and that's the thing. It has to excite you. Like if a hundred people read your blog post and even if you don't earn a single dollar from it, just that process of that little win. And it took you how many hours to get there. You have to love that. You know, that has to be something that excites you because otherwise it just becomes a job. And we know what happens when it just becomes a job yeah. is, is, is it, you know, it just becomes something that you're not interested in and you're not going to give, give as much as you need and to. You to it. And you may as well have stayed at your nine to five if absolutely. you're going to be in the same yeah. thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We work so much harder on a blog than we ever did on a nine to five. I'm, I... I've never met a blogger that's like, oh yeah, I just, you know, five o'clock. I just, I just, fin-. it's like, nah, <laughs> it's like you go to sleep at 1am and then you wake up at 7am and you don't even have breakfast. You're like straight back on your laptop. Like, oh, did anyone read my blog post? No. Oh, gotta fix this on my blog. My website's broken. Cool. And it's just, it's 24 seven. And so if you it's don't love it. It's more than a full-time job, right? Yeah, you're never going to last if you don't love it. So, so, um, I think one thing that, that needs to be said is this this really is not for everyone. It's really true what you said there, Brandon, because if you just want to create income while you're traveling, then there are a lot of companies out there that will allow you to work remotely and you could still mm-hmm. have a full-time job and find those. But yeah. if you're the type of person who is into creating a life for yourself and freelancing and being an entrepreneur and being mm-hmm. All doing all of these things where you have to be responsible for your own income and schedule and all of these things, then this is for you. But if not, and you still want to do this, then maybe saving and then traveling would be your thing. Or again, finding a company that will actually allow you to re- work remotely full time would be another way to do this as well. But yeah. like you yeah. said, it's not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's not. Yeah. And I, I do actually meet quite a lot of people out there now working remotely full time. Back like three, four years ago, that wasn't that common, but it's becoming more common now that I'm meeting people like, oh, yeah, I work for this company and and wherever and I do all of their marketing or I do all of their, you know, website maintenance or whatever. Um, so it, I think it's going to, especially in the, maybe in the next five years, we're going to see a lot of that happening, uh, you know, in the co-working spaces yeah. around the world as people working remotely. Yeah, it's well, exciting, because, actually. It's pretty cool. Because there's people like you, Brandon, who are entrepreneurs and who do work remotely and hire people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why there's so many more companies like this popping up is because of someone like you who are right. hiring people to do work for them as well. And it's really exciting. Like you said, it's a really exciting time for all of us to be able to do this. And you've been doing this for for a really long time. So (laughs) yeah, it doesn't feel it it feels long when you look back on it. But otherwise, it's just kind of like, like I said, if if, if you love it, it doesn't feel like work. And it just it just goes like. So you talked about creating income when you first started this lifestyle by by saving and then by writing for other companies. Now, how do you continue to create income today? 
freelancing is kind of it's it's fallen out of my schedule now it's just something i don't have time for so i'm fortunate enough that my blog makes a nice income it, it still doesn't make as much as i made as an accountant but it makes it an income that is enough for me to live modestly um, i have a couple of niche websites that um, make a small income and i've working on another blog at the moment which is more it's actually um more based around finance and investment which is something that i've still spent a lot of time reading about and staying educated on and i'd like to put that up um, into another blog so i'm working on that right now but most of my income comes through my main travel blog and that's mostly made through affiliate marketing some advertising um, I have a an ebook, a premium ebook for sale on my blog, which um, sells a few copies every month. And yeah, it's mostly it's mostly through uh, content marketing based uh, affiliates, which is basically it means that you you recommend various products and services on your website, and you earn money for the referrals. Those are generally the three main ways that I make money on my blog. There's a few other little things that that go on there but it's mostly affiliate marketing advertising and and product sales so for somebody who wants to start the same lifestyle or something similar as you it obviously doesn't make money a blog overnight it takes a little bit of time to gain the audience and enough click-throughs for you to make affiliate marketing worthwhile what would be your best advice for someone who is just starting out and wants to do this as well well, if they want to go the blogging route, my advice would be to get started like today. A lot of people that are like, oh, but I don't know what to call my blog and I don't know how to design it. And, you know, just start it today. You start writing like right now because all that other stuff, it, it comes later. You know, it, when it comes to, to being a blogger, it's just about pumping out content, showing the world who you are building it audience all this monetization stuff and everything it comes it comes almost naturally later on you know it's like once you've got people reading your stuff then then it almost becomes thinking about money before you have the audience is kind of like running before you can walk you know what i mean like you you can't monetize an audience if you don't have an audience and so i think people when it comes to blogging they get all caught up in the the first the first question every single person asks me when i tell them that i blog for a living is oh how do how do you make, how do i make money with a blog and it's like <laughs> man you're asking the wrong question like that's the absolute wrong question the, the question should be how do you get people to read your blog because yeah. then once you get people to read your blog you can start to monetize the audience, but there's no way you're making any money if no one wants to hear what you have to say. Um, so I would say start writing today. Write about something that you're interested in, something that you're passionate about. Write about something that write about something that you could see yourself writing about for the next twenty years. And once you go down the blogging rabbit hole, trust me, everything you'll figure out everything along the way. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most successful bloggers that I know all started that way. Every single one of them started that way. They didn't say, oh, I'm going to start a blog. Yeah. And also people will tell you exactly what it is that they want from you. And that's when you start realizing what types of things that you can start monetizing. So it's it, it always starts small. I've, I've never met a, a big, well, not even big time, a, a blogger that makes a living from their blog that started out saying, I'm going to build a blog that's going to make me a lot of money so I can live off it. Pretty much every (laughs) single one was like, I just started blogging and then people started reading my stuff and then I figured out that I could make money from it. And so I started doing this and I made a hundred bucks that month and I was like, wow. And then I did something else and the next month I made 200 and then eventually they were making three, four thousand dollars a month and they were, they were living off their blog. It happens very organically. And I think that's, that's um, proof that, Blogs that are written for the right reasons are the ones that succeed. Building a blog just to make money is never, in my opinion, is never the right reason to start yeah. a blog because you're just never going to last that long. I mean, you can work 100, 200, 300 hours on your blog and not make a single dollar from it. And that's quite normal, actually. Mm-hmm. You have to have a lot of passion for it. And you mentioned that Absolutely. before, yeah. because when you're not making money for a long time, the only thing that's going to keep you going is, and something that's consistent is going to be your passion and your drive for what it yeah, is that you're sure. doing. Yep. hundred percent. 
yeah if so, it's not a labor of love it's 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 not gonna it's not gonna last very long you know you make far more money working at uh you know at kfc just <laughs> serving chicken like on a put on an hour dollars per hour basis you're gonna earn many times more dollars working at kfc than you are on a blog so <laughs> if you're, if you're blogging for money, you're, <laughs> yeah <laughs> starbucks is gonna make you a millionaire much faster than blogging will so <laughs> <laughs> So, Brendan, let's fast forward to 30 years from now and you're looking back at your life. What legacy would mm. you like to leave and what do you want to be remembered for? Well, I would hope that people would say that I was someone who was honest. Um, I was someone who was generous and someone who who took chances, you know, someone that, that wasn't afraid to do something scary do something risky that's a good question because i'm kind of at that age now where it's like i remember i was in um amsterdam last year and i was in this hostel and i was just i just remember lying there one day and i was just like man am i really still like sleeping in a dorm room i'm like i just i turned 32 (laughs) last year and i was like uh, I, i had that moment where i was like am i really did i really turn into that guy that is like still sleeping in in a in a bunk bed at 32 you know and I started (laughs) and I felt okay about it like for me I was like I'm still fine I'm still having a good time and I'm still enjoying it but I started thinking like it's gonna get a little bit weird soon like surely you can't be 40 and sleeping in a dorm room you know and so I was like I don't know how many years (laughs) I got left of doing this but um I have uh, to be honest I have been thinking a lot more in the last say one or two years about you know, whether I will have a family and whether I will, what what place I will settle down in if I do end up settling down. And it's kind of a very fickle thought process because, you know, I'll think about it a lot one day and then the next day I'll meet this guy who's like, I don't know, like 45 and he's still traveling and he's doing all this crazy stuff. And I'm like, oh man, I, I still got time. I don't know if I think about <laughs> that just yet. So it's, um, so 30 years from now, yeah, I can't, I couldn't tell you, but, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd hope that people would remember me as someone that, um, someone that wasn't afraid of adventure, and someone who was, who spoke honestly and 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 tried to, tried to stay as as honest as possible when, when sharing the the nomad life. <laughs> well, you're definitely doing that now. You're very adventurous, and you're doing something outside of the box. So it's starting, Brendan. It's starting. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What would you What would you like to be remembered as in thirty years? I, there's so many things that I still want to do. So hopefully, mm-hmm. I figured that out as well as I go. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It is a question. Mm. I should be That's asking. A difficult I, one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I because I ask this so much of mm. my guests. Every time I ask myself that, it's always different. <laughs> okay. Well, how are you Especially, feeling right now? Like, what's one I, thing that you'd like to be remembered as? <laughs> I guess for me, it's something that, like you, someone who took a chance and yeah. did something that wasn't expected, or maybe something that I didn't even expect I could do myself. And right really also encourage other people to go outside of that box from their own types of expectations of themselves because there's other things in our life that we look at expectations from family from friends but what about you what are your expectations of yourself and are you going after that and there's so many surprising things that could happen if you just follow your gut sometimes and yourself what you're feeling you know, sometimes it's good. It turns out good, really great. And sometimes not so much, but it's always a learning experience, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So so someone who, I guess, pushed their limits. Exactly. Yeah, into, yeah that's a good thing to strive for. Yeah. <laughs> it's every day, you know, every day we yeah. have to try to do something to make ourselves and other people and I guess anything around us a little better is always good. So is there any questions that you wish people asked you more of? Ask me more of? Mm-hmm. I really enjoy getting asked questions <laughs> just because I think that's how you learn, you know? Like, I, I I really appreciate someone who will ask me a question about 
usually about the way that I live. So they'll be like, oh, so you're a blogger. Okay, so whatever, how, how long have you been blogging? What's your blog about? How do you make money from blog? And you can tell that they are genuinely interested in, like they might write down notes and they might, you know, they'll take out their phone and they'll write down notes. You can immediately tell like, oh, this person, they might, they might make something of themselves with this, with this information I'm giving them because so many people that you, that you meet, they're like, oh, you're a blogger. Like, how do you make money from a blog? Oh, advertising. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. And they, and they, you can tell that they just, it, it just goes over the head, but um, they're like, that would, that would be cool. You're so lucky, you know, to be able to live like that. And it's like, yeah, it's not luck. It's uh, <laughs> it's, it's something a little bit more than that. And so, so much very work. Often, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And so every now and then I'll get a reader that will email me and they'll be like, oh man, I, 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 I read that article that you wrote and I started doing this and I started doing that. And now I'm like going on my first trip. I just quit my job. And it's just like, that's, that's better than any, any, you know, affiliate deposit from, you know, some affiliate partner or advertising payment or anything. Just that, that someone read something that you wrote and now they're really making a, 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 a material change to their life towards something that they really want. That's just, that's the best feeling ever. So I, I don't really shy away from questions. You know, when people ask me questions, I'm always very open and I'm always very willing to answer questions because I feel like, yeah, that's how people, that's how people learn. And that's how I learned in the beginning too. I remember I reached out to a lot of bloggers when I first started blogging, shout out Earl from WonderingEarl.com. <laughs> shout out to uh, Jody from Legal Nomads. Shout out to Mark from Migrationology. All these guys, I emailed them and they they were so gracious with their time. And they emailed me back like, and they were like, oh, cool, you're starting a blog. Well, you know, here's the answer to your questions. And that, just even that was like so encouraging to me. That was like, I want to be one of those people, you know, that like yeah. is doing such a it's cool really thing with helpful. their life. And yeah. yeah, and it's not too good to like, help people that are starting out at the bottom. So, so yeah, no, I don't think there's any question that I would ever be like, I wish you didn't ask me that. You know, I'm, quite, <laughs> quite, I'm quite happy to answer anyone's questions. Well, it's also really great to learn that there's so many people out there who are really genuinely wants to help you. I mean, that's why you have a blog because you want to give tips and tricks to people. And then when mm. somebody reaches out to you, it's just another step to help others to really do what it is that they want to do with their lives and mm -hmm. you will come across sometimes here and there people who are who are really afraid to ask questions because they think you're going to i don't know yeah. what they think it's going to happen maybe you'll eat them yeah. alive or something but yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think most of them think it's a stupid question like a lot yeah. of them ask something and they think it's a stupid question it's like man if you knew how clueless all of us were <laughs> when we started this thing like you wouldn't there's no such thing as a stupid question no. I remember trying to figure out what a web host was and like which web host <laughs> I was supposed to use. And I spent so long just like reading about every web host and, and, and which one was the best and, and, you know, like how you set up a, how you set up your WordPress, installing WordPress for the first time. Oh my God. Like, don't even... <laughs> We're all so clueless with everything. Yeah. And even now, even with all the years that you have, there's always going to be something every day that you're learning. So it's all a learning experience. It's all a learning process. Now, Absolutely. Brandon, if our listeners want to know more about you, where can they find you? Uh, so my blog is brenontheroad.com. That's B-R-E-N on the road.com. And I'm at Bren on the road on pretty much every every social there is on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. I'm on my handle is Bren on the road. So nice and easy. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Bren. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get the extended interview with Bren where he shares how to become a full-time traveler. Hey, Offbeat family, I really appreciate you listening to this episode. I would love to hear more from you and what you think of the podcast. Suggestions on guests, topics we can discuss, or maybe you just want to be friends. Why don't we chat some more on Facebook at The OB Life or send me a message at hello at theoffbeatlife.com. I can't wait to hear from you.